Well, good evening. <clears throat> good evening. Good evening. Good Come evening. on in. Amen. How is everyone doing tonight? Bless the name of the Lord, for truly he is worthy. He is. Amen. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to welcome you in. Come on in. Welcome to the Bridge Church of Alabama. Where we're loving God, loving people, and pursuing purpose. Yes, thank you for tuning in tonight. You could have worship anywhere online tonight, but we want to thank you for tuning in for our midweek service. Uh, as you can see, I have a, um, someone special uh, with me tonight. We have Kenya Penninger here with me tonight. She's going to help me facilitate um, Good evening, everybody. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> and um, we just want to thank, if we get some feedback, I'm not quite mm -hmm. sure what's going on with it. I see you still working some stuff out, but uh, while you're doing that, we just want to thank uh, Pastor Desmond Peacock Sr. Yes. of Excelling Church, the Excelling Church Georgia Campus. Yes. Hey, man, for coming last week and just filling in for us. Yes. Uh, of course, Pastor is still out of town, and I was out of town myself last week. And um, so we needed a, a vessel to come in and facilitate, and he was so gracious. So thank you, son, for coming in and facilitating Bible study for us. Um, from the reaction, it must have been a dynamic word. Yes, it was. All right, yes. now. He brought the word last week. Y'all will be proud. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, thanks again, son. We're so glad you could, could be here for us and in our stead last week. Um, but the week prior to that, Marcia and I were here, and we talked about um, why does God get us stuck sometimes. So we're going to do a brief recap on that and we're going to go into our lesson this week but before we do that let us have a word of prayer amen. amen father we bless you tonight we come giving you all the glory all the honor all the praise yes. that is due unto your holy name thank you yes. for giving us this opportunity to uh come and to rightly divide your word we pray yes. that as we uh teach tonight and as we are taught that your word will go forth with power and authority, that it will um, just cause us, Lord, to leave out of here better than we came. Father, for those who are empty, fill them up. For those, Father God, who are filled, Father, cause them to overflow tonight. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Glory to God. Well, we again want to thank you for tuning in tonight. Those who are in the house, thank you for being uh, in, in the uh, building with us tonight as well. Amen. Amen. How's your day been today? It's been busy, but it's been wonderful. Okay. All Amen. right. And how about yours? It's been good. Amen. I've been relaxing today. Hey. <laughs> hey. We need that sometimes. Yes, we do. And I <laughs> needed it this week. Wow, well, I tell you, last week, uh, just traveling uh, and um you know, and after Sunday coming and ministering, I just said, you know what, I'm just going to take a couple of days and just kind of just resolve. Mm -hmm. Decompress <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Yeah, so, but God is good. I, I'm Amen. excited. Uh, and thank you for accepting uh, the invitation to come and um, speak with me tonight, you know, as yeah, we facilitate pleasure. Bible study. My pleasure. But as I said, so last, the last uh, two weeks ago, when Marsha and I had, were here, we talked about, why, uh, why does God get us stuck? Mm -hmm. And we talked about how we, the belief is that he does it sometimes really to just to purify our hearts, to really uh, refine us, some of those areas, to right. really um, build some things up in us that we may need for where he's taking us. Right? Yes. yes. And so we talked about the story of uh, Moses as the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt and how God delivered them out of that. Yes. And how um, how in that, that it looked like to the children of Israel that it was a setup for them to be taken down, but mm -hmm. actually it was a set up by God to take his enemies, take their enemy mm -hmm. out. Yes. And with that also, not only did he take Pharaoh out, right? Right. But he also... Um, 
that increased their faith in God and what he's able to do. So it really drove that fear out of their lives as well. Yes. And so tonight we're going to really just uh, move forward and we're just going to um, kind of uh, go a little bit further in um, Exodus chapter uh, 14. Well, no, actually tonight we're going to begin at 18. To 18. <laughs> but before we get there, what I want to do is kind of do like a recap. So from the time that God took the children of Israel and delivered them out of Egypt, okay, that was chapter 14. Right. So then as they were going on, in chapter 15 is when they really celebrated what God had done. They really sung, they sung and, and uh, danced and just was grateful to the Lord, praising him for what he had done. And then at the end of chapter 15 is when they arrived at uh, Mara and Elam, mm -hmm. and God makes the bitter water suitable for their drinking. So they yes. were on this journey, and they they did they the water initially was bitter. So here God goes and He performs another miracle for them. Right. And then going on to chapter 16 mm -hmm. is when God provides them manna and quail. Yes. To nourish them, right? Right. So he does another great work in their lives. Then chapter 17 is when they get to the place and um, they are in the thirst again. Right. And God instructs Moses to strike the rock so that it could bring forth water for them to drink. And that leads us to chapter 17. Um, and I want to actually read that. Let's read. Go to chapter 17, please, in Exodus. I want to look at it in the New King James Version. And I want to look at uh, verses 8 through 13. Because now they had entered, okay, now Amalek can't, oh, I just want to start with, okay, yeah. Do I want to start with eight? Mm, we can start now. Now uh, Amalek came and fought with Israel in uh, Rephidim, mm -hmm. Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, choose us some men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And so it was when Moses is held up his hand, go back, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, y'all stay with me, Amalek prevailed. Verse 12. But Moses' hands became heavy. So they took a stone and put it put it under him and he sat on it and Aaron and her supported his hands one on one one on one side and the other on the other side and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun so we see that this relationship here right right so Moses goes to the top of this hill, and Aaron and Hur go with him. And when he gets weary and can no longer hold up his hands because God told him that uh, they were going to defeat them, but as long as he held up the rod, they were victorious in the battle. But as soon as he began to, his hands began to fall, that's when the Amalekites began to overtake them. Right. So, but he had Aaron and her there beside him to hold his hands up. So now we're going to look at chapter, uh, we're going to go to the next chapter. Let's look at chapter 18. And we're going to look at verse 1. 
And Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel, his people, that the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. Now I want to go to verse 7 and 8. Because, I mean, the rest of that kind of just breaks down some things. So, so Moses went out to meet his father-in-law, bowed down and kissed him, and they asked each other about their well-being, and they went into the tent, and Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord had done, it done to Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake. All the hardships that had come upon them on the way and how the Lord had delivered them. Is that the end of verse 8? So as we look at this, we want to talk tonight about relationships. We're going to talk about relationships and we're going to talk about healthy relationships and we're going to talk about how we <clears throat> surrender difficult relationships to the Lord. So now we're going to go back and let's look at um, chapter, um, excuse me, the same chapter, um, what, what chapter is it? Yeah, chapter 18 and 7 and 8 where basically, I'll, um, just to paraphrase it, here in 7 and 8, Moses, uh, Jethro and, and uh, Moses in this in their relationship they begin to share he right. begins to share the good mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. bad so I would like to ask those I want to get the audience involved how many of you have relationships where you can share the good and the bad in your relationships mm -hmm. well Daphne, you want to you, start? You, you, you can. I can. I can. I I have relationships where I can share the good and the bad. And through the good and bad, that we, we look at what God is doing mm -hmm. and um, able to praise God with the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody else? Yes, you have those. I have it with, you know, with my daughter. So, yeah, we have a relationship where we, we share the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and sometimes in sharing the good and the bad, it may be seem bad to me, but sometimes she'll see something where we are, sometimes we wind up laughing mm -hmm. when, when I see, you know, from another perspective. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so it was important for, you know, all that Moses had gone through from Chapter 14, you know, some of the hardships and some of the good times, how from – chapter 14 to 18 and then he he went and basically he found him someone that he could really share right his journey with right and somebody that really embraced him and basically it says i think in, in seven or eight that jethro did the same exactly because they inquired about their both of their well-being that's what it was chapter that mm -hmm. was in chapter i mean in verse number seven, seven i believe but how many of us have those relationships where you call them <laughs> and the minute you they you they say hello and you say hello, they gonna tell you everything that they got going on. Mm -hmm. They they don't even allow you to get. I mean, and then when you do say something, somehow it managed to flip right back over to them. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you I've want to say something else? <laughs> uh, the re the relationship is not an overnight thing. You have to spend some time with that person. Mm -hmm. Now Jethro was his father-in-law. Mm -hmm. He spent forty years in the desert with him, mm -hmm. and Jethro was a Kenite. Mm -hmm. He was a priest. Mm -hmm. So Kenites are kin to Cain. If you go through the Bible, you see everywhere in there, the Kenites were the ones that came to the rescue of the people. Mm. 
And when they came, got in trouble, was getting ready to fight, they told the can I get away because you protected. So our relationships, you don't stay in a priest's house 40 years and not know something. Right. That's right. <laughs> you know, That's he's right. going to tell you about God. Absolutely. Yes. Praise God. Absolutely. So we have the relationship that we have. It, it comes about over a, a, num a, a number of years mm -hmm. that that relationship that I had, whatever I was going through, uh, my friend was going through the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of bonded in misery, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. So I was able to go to him at all, you know, a lot of different things and, and not feel that I was going to be judged because you open up yourself right. and you're hoping that this person don't snatch your heart out. Exactly. Right. You see? But you've right. been through the same thing. Absolutely. And you know what, between me and him and I, uh, it was safe. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some things that you can share with, uh, like somebody said, I'm going to tell you this, don't you tell nobody? Well, you just might as well shout on top of the roof. Right. right. <laughs> I, wanna, I really want to touch on what you just mm -hmm. said when you said that it's safe. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yes. that is the sign of, because what we're going to do is we're going to give, like, uh, we're going to give one to five signs of healthy relationships. Right. And then as we give those signs of healthy relationships, we're also going to talk about from the flip side of that, how they can look unhealthy. And so, so when we talk about that, they both had an opportunity to share all things. Right. They shared mm -hmm. their victories. They shared the hardships. Mm -hmm. And they were able to help one another through whatever it was that they were, um, you know, just in life. Right. Does and anybody? Go ahead, Oh, Katie. I'm sorry. No, and I just wanted to say, you know, we always talk about iron, sharp, iron sharpeneth iron. Mm. And when we make those relationships, like Elder Sutton was saying, where you know that, okay, this person's been through this and they can help me, that means that that iron is now sharpening you and strengthening you mm -hmm. because I made it through, so now I can tell you how to get through it. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, that's that's one of those things that when he was saying, I was like, yes, yes, because we always say iron, iron sharpeneth iron. Mm -hmm. So those are the, that's one of those things that we, I think, sometimes forget, like you say, in those relationships. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to add something before we move forward? Okay. So now we're going to look at um, the next feature of verses. We're going to go to 9 through 11. And let's look at I think I want to look at it in the uh, New Living Translation. I think that might be a good thing. And it says here, Jethro was delighted when he heard about all the good things the Lord had done for Israel, and he rescued them from the hand of the Egyptians. Praise the Lord, Jethro said, for he has rescued you from the Egyptians and from Pharaoh. Yes, he has rescued Israel from the powerful hand of Egypt. Verse 11. I know now that the Lord is greater than all other gods because he rescued his people from the oppression of the proud Egyptians. So here you find Jethro is celebrating and rejoicing mm -hmm. with Moses mm -hmm. and what God has done in mm -hmm. his life and in the life, life of Israel, the children of Israel. Right. And then not only is he rejoicing, but there's a joyous rejoicing because there are times where we can rejoice with someone, but we're secret. sometimes we can be secretly jealous. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's like I'm applauding on the outside, mm -hmm. but on the inside, I'm like, well, God, you know, you know, that's all fine and good, but when is it my turn? Well, why, you know, they got this going on and that going on, so why are you promoting them? And I'm living right, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing that, mm -hmm. so why are you not promo promoting me? But we mm -hmm. have to understand that in the, in relationships, for me, I'll, I'll speak for me. Let me, let, me, let me rephrase what I'm about to say. For me, when I'm in relationship with someone, mm -hmm. I've always been a type of friend where I'm all or nothing. So when I rejoice for you and I'm saying, oh, I'm so proud of you, I'm happy for you, I'm, I'm genuinely happy for you, mm -hmm. you know. And so when you do that, you have to understand that there's, like he was saying earlier, there's time spent, there's a joint connection. And I know that when you grow, I grow. Mm -hmm. 
because seeing you, especially in the word of God or being a child of God, I know that if he's blessing you, right. it encourages me for whatever I'm praying for mm -hmm. and know that he's, you know, like like we say, in my turn, in my mind is right around the mm -hmm. corner, you know, mm -hmm. and to keep on because I know that he's still continually blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, God, as we always say, God is, is in the blessing business, but sometimes we get discouraged when we don't see things, ha things happening in our time frame. Mm -hmm. And then we'll see someone like, you know, and I know a lot of us stay on social media, but we'll see, you know, people that we know doing, sometimes doing the same thing, the very thing that we're praying for. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it seems like that's all you're seeing. You know, I'm praying for a husband, so now I'm seeing everybody getting engaged, mm -hmm. everybody getting married. You know, I want a baby, so now I'm seeing all these people, you know, mm -hmm. pregnancy announcements. And, you know, and so it begins to, you know, kind of gradually creep on you. And sometimes yeah. you don't even realize yeah. Like this thing is happening. So we have to be careful of that. And that's why I say, you know, you have to be very genuine when you're applauding in, in the success. And so with Jethro, his first thing was praise the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's a thing coming from the inside because I know nobody but the Lord has delivered y'all Absolutely. out of the hands of Pharaoh and the Egyptians. Absolutely. And I think that's, you know, you said a whole, you said a lot right there because... <laughs> I know for myself, I've been in that position. And I think that, you know, if we're all honest, and mm -hmm. the, the, what the point I want to make is that we have to be honest with God. Right. You know, we have to, you know, um, because we all are in different seasons. Mm -hmm. And so you may receive something in a different, different season. I may not be ready for it. God knows that you are more prepared, or whatever the case may be. Right. But in those times where we feel like, well, God, why didn't it happen for me? Mm -hmm. That we have to immediately put that before the Lord and say, Lord, I know, and I've been in this place. Lord, I am so happy for my sister. I am so happy for them. But what is this I'm feeling in within myself? You right. know, check me. Why, what is this in my heart? You know, I genuinely, I'm happy for them, but I feel this way. I feel that way. And really just exposing that and you just continuing to, for me, continuing to pray for that person. Right. You know, and just really continue to give them the accolades. Right. And, and I think the support as well. Because sometimes you can give the accolades, but you're not giving the support. So I think that as well. Like yeah. when they need you to be there, support them. As um, as we just read about um, Aaron and um, her, her, yeah, mm -hmm. holding up Moses', Moses arms. So it, they saw that okay, he's a leader, you know, and it's his, it's his time, quote unquote, his time to shine. Mm -hmm. But he's getting weary. Mm -hmm. So let us come alongside him. Mm -hmm. And I know this is a little further than what we we're t talking about, but. Right. You know, let me come alongside him and help him. Right. But even in what you were just saying, though, so that he can shine, really what Moses was doing, it really was for everybody. everybody. Right. And so really, and that's the thing, sometimes when we help others, you know, we sometimes we're helping ourselves. Right. You know, when we, when we help lift up others, whatever God is doing in their life, we can become recipients of, whatever God is doing in their lives. Right. Does anybody have any comments? Anything they would like yes, to I add? I want to say, uh, you're talking about the raising his arm up, you know. Mm -hmm. He uh, had the rod, and that was the rod of correction. And so when he was raising his arm up, he got tired. And this rod represents uh, God correcting it are correcting not only them, but the, the enemy also. Mm -hmm. right. So what happened? When he got tired, someone else had to come in and help him. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes we want to try to do it by ourselves, but you're going to need help. Absolutely. Right. Because right. in our flesh mind, we get weak. Yes. yes. Absolutely. I agree with that. Absolutely. <laughs> Glory to God on that. Amen. Yes and amen. Yeah, what's that saying? Uh, um, when you hear some people say that I was a uh, self-made millionaire. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, you ain't been mm -mm. no self-made nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you had some you help somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. You had some help. Somewhere along the line. Somebody helped you do somewhere. something. Somewhere. <laughs> somebody helped you do something. <laughs> when you gonna start, somebody else want to say something? We're the 
body, you know, the body that God has made, and we come together. And when one area is tired and weak, then there's another area that has the strength to be able to hold up or lift up and to do what God is calling, uh, whatever he wants to do. Mm-hmm. You know, with the body of Christ, you know, we can't do it all by ourselves. I think that's a foolish thing that it would be like for me it would be it's a kind of selfish thing when God has um, provided all that we need and we have provided each other you know that's like the song says I need you in all the parts of God's right, body right right mm-hmm. yeah. yeah that's good um, and so the second sign of a healthy relationship is celebrating each other's successes yeah so now we're going to go and we're going to look at um, uh, chapter, excuse me, verse 12 again. Same version. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, brought a burnt offering and sacrifices to God. Aaron and all the elders of Israel came out and joined him in a sacrificial meal in God's presence. So let's go back to the beginning of that. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, brought a burnt offering and sacrifice to God. Aaron and all the elders of Israel came out and join him so that's the third sign of a healthy relationship is that all who come are welcome and so how many of us have been in a setting whether it when you were coming up in school Mm -hmm. and some of us have even experienced in church you have gone to greet someone or really love on somebody or really become part of a group but you were shunned. You were not embraced in that. So mm-hmm. it was almost like it was a click. It's like, you know, me and Kenya. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, here come Marsha, and we be like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is she really trying to come up here for this? Right. <laughs> it's like, we might talk to her, but, you know, we you, you kind of standoffish. Right. And so as the body of Christ, we should be welcoming. We should welcome all who want to be a part because there is something that you have that I need as we just said you know there are different things and our our focal scripture says um, in Ephesians I can't think of what it says right now but we're all one body fitly joined together each part doing its own special work right and so we have to be careful about that Mm -hmm. you know when we're again it could be at work you know, you got that favorite co-worker, y'all sitting around the water cooler. Right. And then somebody else walk up and then you, you like, walk off. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to read um, this. Uh, you don't have to turn to it, Brother Jeff, but it's Philippians, Philippians for, uh, 2 and 4. And it says, um, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Mm. So... Even in the Bible, it's telling you to be mindful of the people that are around you. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times we do get consumed with just what, you know, is in my immediate circle. So like Pastor Latrilla was saying, you know, we link up Mm -hmm. and then Miss Mary come along and we're like, "Mm, she's not on our level. You know, she don't know as much as we know, Mm -hmm. you know, or she don't know what we know, you know, or she don't have this, you know, degree or she don't have this, Mm -hmm. you know, these things that Mm -hmm. we tend to add value to, yeah. you know, and so we have to be careful about that, and, or even, you know, and I'll say for me, I'm a closed off person, so I don't, I'm not one of those people that like to share with mm-hmm. everybody, mm-hmm. and I'm working on that, Lord knows I am, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but, you know, er, you know, everybody's got their area, but I'm, I'm one of those people that don't, don't like to share, and it goes back to a lot of what uh, Elder Sutton was saying earlier about being vulnerable and knowing that, um, 
I can tell somebody something and they're not going to run off and tell it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've had bad experiences with that. So now it's very, a little harder. Mm -hmm. I was going to say very hard, but it's a little harder <laughs> for me to share. But um, we, I still have to be, even in that, I still have to be mindful because like um, we were saying, you may have something for, that God gives you for me mm -hmm. to encourage me through whatever situation I may be going through. Mm -hmm. And again, we can't think that we can do it all alone. Mm -hmm. You know, that we, we get used to that independent, what we call an independent spirit and, and or end up being independent. Mm -hmm. And um, independent is, um, or saying that or using that as an excuse can be sometimes, um, I think, how can I put it? I think it's one of those things we use uh, to, to keep us from sharing life or doing life with one another at times. Mm -hmm. You know, because if I, if I stay independent, we talk, because we do do a lot of talking about how, you know, things have changed. And even last night when we were at the outreach last night, mm -hmm. how she was saying, um, the, the lady that was talking was saying, uh, talking about the village. And saying how we've lost the village, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because everybody has gotten so independent mm -hmm. that you know now you can't chastise my child or you can't talk to my child that way or you can't, you know. We we got to be careful of that. Mm -hmm. So we got to get out of our own interests at times because it takes a village. Even being an adult or being grown, it still takes a village, Absolutely. you know. Yeah. And I think sometimes we we lose that. Especially when we're talking about the body of Christ, um, we could it could be so easy if we're not careful. We come in and we embrace other, you know, each other. But then when we have visitors, when we have guests, you know, after service, we find ourselves in each other's faces rather than reaching out to someone yes. who might be new to really bring them in to really love on them and show them the love of God, you know, and show that, um, yeah, basically just really show forth and be that loving person to show that loving kindness right. to someone who really has not, may not have even felt that, that That's love of, love, that love of, from God. Elder yeah. Sutton, you want to say something? Yeah, I think this is years ago, you know, my, my daughter, what, she's 43, but she's about 17 at the time we were mm -hmm. going to a church and uh, it was rather I felt like it was unfriendly or you know wasn't inviting mm -hmm. so uh, we left and we went to another church and we got out the car and we got to the door and, and the, uh, the usher big old smile on her face and and everybody we walked in and my daughter said, now this is where we supposed to be right <laughs> here. Exactly. So, and just like you're saying, like mm -hmm. uh, we tend to group ourselves with those we feel comfortable with right. and then not acknowledging the people that that person that may have come in mm -hmm. and that person need to also be feeling that I want to be a part of something and you want to be the person to, to bring that person in and make them feel welcome. Absolutely. Right. You know, you have to make them feel welcome because they're not automatic because they come into a setting they don't know nobody mm -hmm. and you just all you just loving on them just just mm -hmm. loving on them you know say so glad you came what's your name where you been anyway right, right. I've been looking right. for you to come <laughs> in you know, just like you know them you yes, know you don't exactly. like you're in an office setting you know well uh, I'll see you in the morning and all that time. <laughs> you know, you know how folks do. well some may speak like that <laughs> there you go there you may go. not mean anything by it Say something? I just I, I feel like I know we get to a, a point in time where we're we're thinking sometimes we can get to a point where we're thinking okay I'm on a different level or whatsoever and sometimes there are people the body is the body God has placed many many gifts in each body mm -hmm. you'll never know what somebody has and, and, and when you stay in that clique, because, you know, you, you're going to miss out on what's right there 
what what you need. Yes. And some people they they kind of shun away from the clicks because they're like, you know, I'm not gonna get in there. And I'm not, you know, that that that's not good. Mm-hmm. I come when it's when it's time and when with the God in us. There's somebody that could be sitting around for whatsoever, but the God is in us to say, "Hey, go over there, talk to that person." Mm-hmm. You go there with a smile. You don't know what God wants to do, but you're making yourself available. If you're in a clique and you like, "Oh, we hang together and we this my my good, this my whatsoever," you are gonna miss out on what God mm-hmm. is having you to do. Somebody is hurting, but you know. We are the body. We should be sharing love. The light in us should be so full that it's bursting out. Mm-hmm. You right. know, it's bursting out, reaching to people, yes. reaching to people. So that's that's it. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. And um, and just to add to that, I think that you know sometimes, and, and you mentioned it, and Daphne just mentioned it as well, is that. You know, there are some who, once they get to a certain level in ministry, you know, mm-hmm. they feel as if they can't be as loving or be as outgoing. Right. But a lot of times I find that, you know, that when those who are in leadership, when they do reach out to those who are visiting or, you know, someone that may feel uncomfortable, to me, my experience has been that it really brings them joy or it, it, it really gives them a sense of acceptance. Yes. When you go and you mm-hmm. approach them, they be like, wow, you know, she, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You can just, you can tell that you receiving them and you even just sharing with them, it really, it, 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 um, it blesses them. Yes. You know, when we can come outside of our comfort zone and really just really bless people and just really show forth the love of God. Yeah, I think a lot of people have had those experiences where, you know, minister, you know, somebody like a pastor or a minister, you know, like you say, holding a high position, and now I'm too good to, to speak to you, so I'll just walk past you. Mm-hmm. And so I think a lot of people have had those bad experiences, mm-hmm. so when they do see that, it makes an impression, so it to does. speak. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I just wanted to say, too, um, but the word minister in, you know, the original language meant servant. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why mm-hmm. I prefer when people call me, that God's called me to minister, I prefer to be called minister rather than, you know, pastor or something like because of what it means. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and that's what people need to see, that we are servants of God. We're not, we, they ain't no, as the uh, old folks used to say, ain't no big eyes and little U's mm-hmm. in the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. So um, that's what the, I think that's what people need to understand, that we are servants. And we're here to do, yeah, we follow, like, I know God has a chain of command, you know, starting with the pastor, but we're here to do what God called us to do. We're supposed to entice people by our lifestyles of what we say and do to want to, okay, and when we, it's like, what what causes you to do that? It's my love of God. It's Jesus. This is, this is what makes me do this. So I'm opening the door for somebody to introduce you to Jesus. It may not be me, but somebody will introduce you to Jesus, and, and that's, that's the goal. Jesus. That is the goal. <laughs> I was getting ready She's to make a point. Yeah. Oh, Goodness. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. It'll, It'll come back to you. It'll come back. It'll come. <laughs> um, did you want to say something before we move on? To I was just going to agree with uh, what she had just said. Uh, lately, the last couple of weeks, I've met a lot of people, you know, and I find out, they say, what's your name? I just say, uh, William Sutton. And then I began to talk with them because if I put handles and stuff mm-hmm. in, they take another road. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, That's you know, true. because they feel they can't say certain things, mm-hmm. you know, in front of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I would prefer to know that person, get to know that person, get to mm-hmm. know that person, and tell them where I'm from, you know, and and what I've been through. And, and then the fellow said, uh, hey, we can get together and talk. I can, I turn around and say, that's exactly what I was thinking, you know. Mm-hmm. So now, expect to talk with me, you know. Right. To talk, and we can talk together, you know. So that's a lot of time we have to take the handle off our name, especially we out in the in the uh, Q 
community, especially, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. so that you can get close to the person. Mm -hmm. Because the, the moment you say pastor, elder, or anything like that, mm -hmm. then they go to quoting scriptures mm -hmm. to you, you know, and, 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 and they want you the street words, you know. Right. I don't have no problem with street words because right. I use street words. Right. You know, I use street words. But that's where they are, and that's where you have to meet them. Exactly. There's not time for me to try to, you know, be a big eye, you know, and I'm, you ain't saying you ain't saying enough. Because you start driving them away. Yep. Right. Indeed. And this is the thing that I tell myself. You know, to me, it's all in context. Mm -hmm. It's exactly. like we read the word. And exactly. so if I'm at the grocery store, I'm not serving in my capacity as a pastor. Now, I mean, I, I, the anointing is on me, and, of course, the office is there. But when I'm in the grocery store, I'm a customer just like you. And so if someone comes to meet me and they say, oh, what's your name? Why would I even bring up pastor when I'm not even <laughs> serving right. in that capacity? <laughs> and so to me, that's really how I keep myself grounded. Is it really mm -hmm. yeah. what 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 is the point? What is the point in even saying that? But you meet people out different places. Oh, I'm evangelist so and so, oh my or I'm minister. And again, I'm not knocking that if that's what you. But if you're in the capacity. Mm -hmm. If we both shopping in Dillard's, right, <laughs> and you say, "Oh, I love your hair," you know, what's your name? Um, I'm Evangelist Kenya, Ooh. right? I mean, we, <laughs> we up in Dillard, we shopping. You looking for a dress? Like I'm looking for well, one, right? And so, and so, to me, it's all yes. about just putting things in context That's right. and loving people. And this is, I was actually this weekend, I was part of a book review with Pastor Wendy, and. Uh, one of the things that she mentioned in her book is if we, um, that's the body of Christ, if we really treated each other and we had a culture of honor, yes. mm -hmm. if we really just walked around with a culture of honor where we just honor one another, that's right. where we just really esteem each other, it doesn't matter, you know, if, you know, Carlos is a deacon, I'm the pastor, you the, you know, you know, Whatever. teacher, or yeah. the, uh, you know, yeah. but Whether you hold a title or not. But we all just have a culture of honor where we just really honor each other and who we are in the Lord. Because really, that's really, I mean, we all a child of God, so we should mm -hmm. honor each other from a standpoint of who God has created us to be right. from that standpoint. Um, and so keeping our circles open. So the next one we want to look at, let's go to verse, um, same chapter. We're going to look at verse, uh, let me see if I want to start at 13. I think I might want to start at 13. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll read it. So the next day Moses took his seat to hear, we're going to go down to 18, the people's disputes against each other. They waited before him. From morning till evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he asked, What are you really accomplishing here? Why are you trying to do all this alone while everyone stands around you from morning till evening? Moses replied, because the people come to me to get a ruling from God. When a dispute arises, they come to me, and I am the one who settles the case between the quarreling parties. I inform the people of God's decrees and give them his instructions. This is not good. Moses' father-in-law explained. You're going to wear yourself out and the people too. This job is too heavy a burden for you to handle all by yourself. So the fourth thing of a um, healthy relationship is being able to speak the truth in love. Mm -hmm. Speaking the truth in love. 
speaking the truth in love. Mm -hmm. And so how, how, you know, how many of us have experienced, you have someone in your life, friend, I'm mm -hmm. talking about relationship, but this is just all relationships, not necessarily just friends, but all yeah. relationships. But you have someone that comes to you and they actually ask for your advice. They ask for the wisdom that you have and then you share that wisdom or you share, you know, what you what you feel the Lord is giving, you know, you to, to say to them, but they leave angry or upset. Mm -hmm. And and you've given them the word, not your opinion. Now right. we have to be careful giving folks our own opinions. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or what we think or what we gonna do. Right? We have to really strictly do it, you know, and giving them the wisdom of the Lord. But a healthy relationship is right. you're able to share, you know, you're able to share with people um, things about them. I'll never forget my 40th birthday party, my BFF, Davina. She came down, um, she helped with the party, and there were some things that transpired that night, um, but when all was said and done, that weekend, our friendship was tested. We didn't talk, but we, we had like a big blowout. Now this is, I mean, really, this is the night of my actual party. Later on that night, we had a big blowout. I mean, it was like, it was like, wow. I was like, man, it was like, she said some things, I said some things, and um, I really, when we got off the phone, I was like, wow, God, I don't even know where our, how can our relationship be restored? Mm -hmm. You know, what, no, it was like, what are you doing? How can we move past this point? Right. And um, so we may have gone maybe a night, a couple of days, and then we came back and we talked, and um but during that heated discussion and, and that, that couple of days later when we talked, I shared some things with her about how I felt she was. She shared some things about what she saw and how she thought I was. And we said, well, she said, well, you know, I just think that right now I just need some time. Mm -hmm. I need some time, you know, just to really, you know, just be with the Lord and I just really just need some time to myself. And I respected that. I said, okay, fine. And I think maybe two weeks may have gone by. And we came back, and we really, we did, we talked again. But what I learned from that, it was like, in the beginning, I really didn't see how we would be able to move forward. Right. But it was the best thing that could have happened to us. Mm -hmm. I mean, she had some things that she wanted to share about what she and I, some of it was the Lord, and vice versa. I shared with her some with some things with her that I believe was from the Lord, and we both had to really sit in that. But when all was said and done, she received what I said, and I received what she said. And from this day, I mean, to th from that day to this one, our relationship is so much better. Mm -hmm. It's so much stronger than what it was, and I believe that. When you have healthy relationships, you it's like knowing the heart of a person. When you know the heart of a, if I know that you have my best interest right. and I have yours, then we should be able to, you shouldn't want me to tell you if, you know, if your hair looking crazy, I'm like, oh, it look good. Right. No, you won't <laughs> go walk out of here looking crazy. Mm -hmm. But then the minute that I tell mm -hmm. you your hair look crazy, nah, then mad. you mad with me. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm just trying to be honest mm -hmm. because I love you and I don't want you to look a certain way or this shirt is not very becoming. Right. So really, this is not the best thing that you should wear. Mm -hmm. But if you want to wear it, I'll support you in it. Exactly. But it's your decision, decision, but I'm being honest with you because they, they not Allison is not going to be real with you. <laughs> <laughs> Allison is not going to tell you because she's really nice. <laughs> she is not going to tell you that that shirt look crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're going to let you know walk around looking foolish. Right. <laughs> and so 
so, you know, but we need those relationships. How many of y'all agree we need those relationships? Yes, definitely. We need those relationships. Yes. Because they help us to really to be better. Right. You know, and and yeah. how many of y'all, and this is, I know this is a sidebar, but we watch an American Idol, we watch in The Voice, all these shows, these people get on there, and they can't sing a lick. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I know your mama heard you sing before you left. <laughs> now, why did your sister and brother tell you you really can't carry a tune in a bucket? Mm -hmm. <laughs> really, come on now. Right. But it's like, I don't want, I want people to be honest with me. I want people to tell me. Now, you, if you ask Pastor that, he'd be like, no, you don't. You can't handle it. You can dish it out, but you can't handle it. <laughs> I can hear him saying that now. You can't handle it. <laughs> but uh, I'm, that's, I am working on that. But, but yeah, so, and I sound like to say that, you know, I, I honor her relationship. I honor our relationship, you know, to be able to her tell me what I can't see about myself and vice versa. Did you want to say something? Uh, what was it, 12 cylinders up there or eight cylinders? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? I, uh, I totally agree with you talking about being uh, honest, you know, on the honesty and, and all that go with that. But I remember uh, years and years ago we were, when I was ministering and uh, I would use my wife as, a, as an example and I had to tell her, say, now, I'm saying you. But I'm not talking about you, you see, because if I say somebody else, they're going to take it personal, mm -hmm. you see. So I see how you're doing her, and I'm saying, I wonder if she's taking that personal. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to be, you have to know one another right. so that if you use her as an example, as an example mm -hmm. uh, it's fine because she knows where you're coming from and right. you wouldn't stab in the heart or in the back or anything like that. Right. But you're really trying to, to get other people to, to, to see what you're talking about because everybody has, they say it's two sides to every story. Very true. But it's not. It's your side, her side, and then God's side. Mm -hmm. So that's the side you want to be on. Mm -hmm. And we have to come together and, and, and reconcile our differences because all of it is supposed to be in God. Right. But when you start doing these things for, for get back, now you're out of the will. Yes. And it, it shows you really where you are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you know what you're doing in your heart. Wouldn't it be a great thing that we all can read one another's mind? Mm -hmm. Nobody no. could lie. No, sir, Nobody that could time. lie. You know, so when you're thinking that you ain't, you ain't you know, mixing it with no, uh, <laughs> no sugar and no that's sadness. Right. That's, no. What, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you, it's yeah, straight. It's no chase when you're thinking that. <laughs> And I, and I like that you said that it exposes you for who you are. It shows you who you are. Yeah, and that's what um, you work on. Yeah, because a lot of times we don't, and that's the thing, we don't. We get mad and we'll point the finger. Like you said, I could have easily took what she was doing personal, mm -hmm. you know, to say, oh, well, she's trying to talk about my shirt. Or, you know, what's wrong with my shirt? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I know she's using it as an example. But we have to be very careful about being um, sensitive to stuff like that. And like I was saying earlier, it, it will expose you because we'll want to do, oh, it's all her, it's all her, that's just her opinion, or I can't believe she said that to me. But in all honesty, if we spent that time together and I know her, I know that she don't want me to walk out this door looking like I don't belong to nobody, like I don't have a friend in the world, mm -hmm. you know. So she's going to say, you know, can you come here, come here, come here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And she's like, let me get this for you. Or let me, you know, or mm, you might want to rethink that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and so we have to be very, very careful about that mm -hmm. as well. That's why I say, and then when you, like you said, when, when it does expose, and even if we do get upset, sometimes examine why you're upset. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Examine why you're upset. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of things I had to learn, you know, um, <laughs> me and my mama probably just had this conversation but um, a couple weeks ago. But I'm one of those people who don't like to repeat themselves. That's like one of my, when I say pet peeves, like up here, like I'm, I'm repeating myself, but I'm really upset on the inside, like ready, like, oh, you know what I'm saying? And so I had to think back on 
why God brought it to me is like, why, why is repeating yourself? Because my mom is going through an issue right now. And sometimes I have to repeat myself to her. And so God had to, um, cause I had to come back and apologize to her because of my attitude. But, um, God had me ask the question or ask me the question, why are you so upset about just repeating what you said? Maybe she didn't hear you the first time. Maybe she, her mind was somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Your mind gets somewhere else sometimes, and you don't quite hear a whole conversation. Mm -hmm. And people have to repeat stuff for you sometimes. So why are you so upset mm -hmm. about that? And so now I'm trying to go back and examine, why do I, do, why do I get so upset about repeating myself? Mm -hmm. And I'm finding out some things. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, pre it's not pretty, but <laughs> I'm finding out some things. And I'll be honest, you know, we, we always talk about transparency. A lot of it stemmed from not being heard as a child or feeling as though I wasn't heard as a child. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Let's just let's just get down and raw and wow. dirty about it. You know wow. what I'm saying? Wow. Let's let's talk about where it comes from. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when we get that person in our lives that we know, we know, we, you've been around enough bad to know good when it's around you. So we know that this person is not trying to hurt us mm -hmm. when they say what they say. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you really have to say, okay, God, I didn't like what they said or even maybe even how they said it. Mm -hmm. But what really is it that they're saying to me? Show me what it is they're really saying to me. Mm -hmm. And then show me, again, like I said, why am I so upset about it? Is it because I made up a decision in my mind that this is what, you know, I look good and you ain't about to tell me? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Anyway. And, you know, and, I, and this lesson is really, for me, it's at uh, a great time. Um, but I'll say that this, this, this lesson was like a four-week lesson, and you can attest to that. Yes. And we started this lesson probably back – um, I don't know, maybe July when Pastor left. Mm -hmm. I think that yeah, maybe that, yeah. And so it's a four-week lesson. This is the last week of the lesson. But this lesson really for me right now is confirmation about just some different things that, you know, I've been feeling, which leads me into the next healthy um, signs of a relationship. So we have signs of a healthy relationship are when you – uh, you can share things with one another, mm -hmm. good or bad. You really just, you know, you share each other's lives together. You celebrate each other's successes. You keep your circle or you keep an open, you know, you keep yourself open to all people. Those, yeah. those, those are healthy relationships and not close yourself off. You are able to speak the truth in love and really just point out some things in one another's lives and they be received. Mm -hmm. And the last one is when we speak those things, when we, um, so let me use, go to the scripture for I, it, it, because it may not make sense. So go with me to, um, uh, we're going to look at the same chapter. Let's go to verse 19. We're going to read 19. And I want to see if I want to go all the way through or, but let's start at 19. Now listen to me and let me, now this is uh, uh, Jethro talking to Moses. Now listen to me and let me give you a word of advice. And may God be with you. You should continue to be the people's representative before God, bringing their disputes to him. Teach them God's decrees and give them his instructions. Show them how to conduct their lives, but select from all the people some capable, honest men who fear God and hate bribes. Okay, appoint them as Leaders over groups and over 1,150 mm -hmm. and 10. I think I wanted to just read 21 and then go to 23. Um, 
They should always be available to solve people's common disputes and have them bring the major cases to you. Let the leaders decide the smaller matters themselves. They will help you carry the load, making the task easier for you. Verse 23 is what I want to get to. If you follow this advice and if God commands you to do so, then you will be able to endure the pressures and all these people will go home in peace. So I want to read together 19. Now listen to me and let me give you a word of advice. May God be with you. You should continue to be the God's, the people's representatives before God, bringing their disputes to him, and then go to 23. I think that was the end of 19. Mm -hmm. If you follow this advice, and if God commands you to do so, then you will be able to endure the pressures, and all these people will go home in peace. Um, but basically what he was saying is, and I think it might have been better worded in, I think, I, and I see it now, I have it in the New King James yeah. Version. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let, let me, let's read it in New King James Version, just verse 19 and then 23. Listen now to my voice. I will give you counsel, and God will be with you. Stand before God for the people so that you may bring the difficulties to God. If you do this thing and God so commands you, then you will be able to endure all the pe all this people will also go to their place in peace. The point I want to make is that when we have done these things, when we have spoken the truth and love, whether they have received it or not, if we go then, if we have heard the instructions from the Lord and we as verse 19 says, committed this, the people, or con co commit the situation to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Each person go their own way. As we've committed the person, the relationship to the Lord, we've taken it out of our hands, we've put it in God's hands, then once everybody has sought the Lord, there should be peace. Right. Because they, everybody involved has gone and they have heard from the Lord. So the last thing is entrusting each other, entrusting our relationships to the Lord. Not to our own, what we think, our own opinions, but after we've said our peace, after they've said their peace, just like, you know, with me and my friend, we went back, we separated for a while, heard from the Lord, and we came back and there was peace. Right. And so... When we do those things, if, and so if you tell me something and I, if I know that you have spoken to me in just, and I know that you have spoken with love in your heart for me, right. then it's up to me to go to hear from the Lord, you know, and then prayerfully, if everybody has heard from God, there will be peace. Right, <laughs> right. There will be peace, and so... Um, just knowing that in our relationships, you know, healthy and difficult, that we should just commit those relationships to the Lord. Um, and I've also learned, too, over the last few years, actually, is that we all have different perspectives. What's wrong with my microphone? We all have different perspectives on relationships. Like you may see our relationship one way and I may see it another way. Right. But even in that, you know, when we don't get back what we feel, we should we need to just give that over to the Lord. Right. And just from my own personal testimony, I hope I'm not getting am I getting off this is all this is the same topic. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> my <laughs> own experience what has recently what I got revelation on is that I had a relationship where, you know, we started out, 
I mean, just doing life together. Started out doing life together. I actually have more than one. <laughs> but started out doing life together, and then as each person grew, it's like we grew like this. Mm-hmm. But for me, I felt like I was seeing the relationship from one perspective where I felt like this person was in my life for, I'll just say, duration, Mm -hmm. right? I was looking at it from, because it was one of those first relationships. We shared all things. Right. We shared all things. And so as we grew, I'm looking at it from a perspective of we are sharing all things. But there was, that was not their perspective because as they began to grow, there was a separation that took place. Mm-hmm. And so just recently here, I had to, because I found myself in my heart, it was hurting. And what I found out, it was like God revealed to me that in this relationship that I was suffering from rejection and, um, oh, what's the other one? There was rejection and... Um, I can't think of the word right now, but how I felt. No, it wasn't expectation. It was rejection, and I was felt. I felt. Um, I'll say, for lack of better words, um, devalued. That's, I, I just read. Or, or maybe it was. Re- okay, this one. It was rejection, and from the rejection, mm-hmm. I felt as if I was not good enough gotcha. because I felt with the rejection that they were rejecting me. Because I think I might share this one Bible study already before. Anyway, <laughs> bunny trails. <laughs> but so I, w- I felt like in that rejection, and rejection, it means that you are basically, your worth is not valued anymore, or there is, is, you're rejected because you're not good enough. Your worth is not. And so, like yes, they, I did. They've risen I remember. to another level, and you were not on that level. Yeah, I did. I did. Mm-hmm. Speak. I spoke that one yeah. night. And so God revealed that to me. And so that relationship, I had to give that to God. Mm-hmm. And I had to realize that there was no bad person in it. Right. Because they had their perspective, and I had my perspective. And so, you know, I just had to entrust it to the Lord. That's it. That's it. Because sometimes communication is not... Um, Sometimes not done, you mm-hmm. know, to know where each of us are um, coming in the, into the relationship. Mm-hmm. or um, And sometimes even in relationships, we don't hear each other like we should. Right. Because sometimes mm-hmm. we state stuff, but because yeah. we have our own perspective of what this is. So, like, I can say, you know, Latrilla's my best friend in the mm-hmm. world. You know, my BFF. But in her mind, she's just somebody I'm serving with. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so, because in my mind, oh, this is my BFF. I'm telling her everything. I'll share everything with her. Da, 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 da. And, you know, she'll share some stuff with me, but mm-hmm. she's not sharing everything with me. Right. And But I'm thinking, because I'm viewing it in the way I'm viewing mm-hmm. it, that, okay, she's sharing everything with me, and I'm sharing everything with her. Mm-hmm. And so now, like you said, now I've created a relationship that's not there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so when it, you don't get the response, from that person, like you yeah. like you were stating earlier, mm-hmm. now that's when, like you said, the rejection yeah. and the devaluing yeah. and all that comes in. Yeah. So we I actually, you know, we have to communicate. But I know there are times, like you said, that the communication doesn't happen. So when that doesn't, then, yes, we have to give it to the Lord and say, God, you know, you work it out. Show me me. Show yeah. them them. Show, but show me yeah. me. Yeah. You yeah. know, even if you don't show them them, show me me. Absolutely, and I just want to reiterate, I'm going to let you all, go ahead, because I want to end with this. Okay, well, I want to just say something, too, that sometimes you got to understand in in relationships, you grow apart because of the destiny that God has for you. So you have to go in different directions, and it's not separating, you know, that person can be there if they need to be, but Mm -hmm. depending on what God has called each of you to do, that's the path you got to go in. like this I feel like for an example I use Davina as an example so we've been in each other's life since um, 1999 let's say 2000 and 
And so I don't, and she and I have had this conversation. I don't care what I do. I don't care how big I get. I, she will always be in my life. I, I feel like she will all, it will always be at the level at that it is from a standpoint of, because I feel like it's a choice. That's me. I feel like it's a choice who we decide to keep in our lives. I, and I understand, you know, that old saying that some people in your, your life for a reason, some many people in your life for a season. Yeah. And I understand that there, but to me, it's like, if you want, if I want you to be in my life, mm -hmm. I'm going to be intentional. Right. I'm going to be intentional about you holding that space in my life. If that may, I mean, and of course, yeah. it's, it's both people have to be on the, the same, same page. page. Right. But I and I and I'm, I use that example, you know, because I would. Yeah, I get where I get what you're saying, and yes, to I think to a point it is that way. It is a choice, mm -hmm. but at the same time, um, at like Mama was describing, it's when God is calling me, and I'm not, and I think what she's describing in, in a splitting sometimes is that. Um, it's not that we're splitting as friends per se mm -hmm. or associates or whatever mm -hmm. capacity you're, mm -hmm. you're in, but because God is taking me this way and he's taking you this way at this moment in time, we may not share what we have been sharing. I got you. You see what I'm saying? I got you. Because I have friends that I've known, well, most of our friends are family, but still, I've known most of my life, mm -hmm. you know. But when I see them, if we haven't talked in a while, when I see them, it's like we've never left each other's presence. Right, right, right. So right. it's not necessarily that you don't take them with you. Because um, I have a friend, Lord knows, Tanya is, she, I can call Tanya like any time of day yeah. and be like, hey, mm -hmm. I need you. And she will be, but right. we're not um, in each other's lives every single okay. day. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. And yeah. so it, we could go months without talking, mm -hmm. months without sharing, months without, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I got it. And so it's not that we're not still that close. I got you. It's just the the depth of it. Well, not the depth, but the dynamics of it has changed. Yes. I got you. Yes. Um, yeah, I'd like to say <laughs> I had a friend when I was first grade. And we was friends throughout our whole school life. And after we graduated from high school, her journey went one way mm -hmm. and mine went another. Mm -hmm. She's still in my heart. And we just came just came back together. Oh. I mean, the love was always there. Right. It never left. Right. And we just came back together a few years ago. And now we, we, we talk, not every day, you know, but sometime, but my experiences that I've had is helping her now in things mm. that she's going through. And her experiences that she had is helping me. Praise God. You know, and, and like, it's kind of like um, the journeys. Mm -hmm. You know, your journey goes, it's a different. I have another friend that I've known for 46 years. Wow. You know, and we lived in different cities. You know, we didn't talk every day or anything like that. And a few years ago, we came back together, okay. you know, and she is my BFF. Oh. And our friendship was tested, just like what you was testifying mm -hmm. about earlier. You know, and I mean, it's a good, good friendship. I mean, it's, it's really good and right. it's solid, mm -hmm. you know, because we really went through together. And it was kind of like Paul and Barnabas, mm. you know. They both had the Lord in them, had God, God was in them, mm -hmm. but because of a difference of opinion, mm -hmm. you know, Paul had to separate himself from Barnabas, mm -hmm. you know, and they had to go different ways, you know, for the ministry's sake, mm -hmm. you know, so um, some, of, some acquaintances, some friendships, they're long, lifelong friendships, right. and like you said earlier, some are for season, you know, but it doesn't mean that that love is gone. That's right. Because the Amen. person is gone out of your life. Right. Amen. You know? Amen. Yeah. Amen. And so uh, I want to, uh, verse 23, I just want to leave with that, is that um, if 
you do this thing and God so commands you, then you will be able to endure and all these people will also go to their place in peace. And so just, um, you know, as we wrap up, Kenya, uh, I just want to say that, you know, as much as we can, let's just really have, try to have healthy relationships. And when we have those relationships where they are difficult, then we must surrender those difficult relationships to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And when we surrender those relationships to the Lord, we have to leave them there. And if, you know, and prayerfully all involved will have peace. Mm -hmm. And no one is right and no one is wrong. It's just, it just is. <laughs> right. And again, I, I, I'm just, when I was going through this, preparing for this, I was like, wow, God, I can't believe this lesson is what it is. But I mean, like I said, you can attest it was a four week yeah. lesson and this just really happened to be the last, last one. Last one. So, yeah. um, you have any last closing statements that you would like to add? <clears throat> No, I think, I mean, you know, like you said, just, you know, we really got to trust um, God in any relationship, mm -hmm. you know, all relationships. And like we said, this is not just about friendships. I know we did a lot of talking about friendship, but mm -hmm. it's not just friendships. It's, you know, between mother and daughter, between father and son, between, Absolutely. you know, uh, your husband and wives. Like, we really have to make sure and ensure that we are putting all relationships and entrusting them to God and letting him do it, you Amen. know. Conflict or no conflict. Oh, in the name. Absolutely. I'm going to let her go first. Can you cut that blue mic? It's got some, some feedback on it. I was sitting here thinking, and, you know, we were talking about relationships, and I know we're on the level where we're talking about telling our friends or our, our persons that's close to us, but what do we do when God tells you, go over there to that sister and tell her that? And, and, and you are you going to to do it and not do it because that could be you know that's the relationship you and God got mm -hmm. that, you know you to go and um, be obedient to him because and, and then that person could get upset but then that person also know that you don't know nothing about her life or his life mm -hmm. and that you must be sent by God you might not never see him no more right but that that relationship and I think that you know just on that level of I you know who we know and the relationship, this thing is gonna go even bigger because we're gonna have to be obedient at times. Like you know, like for instance, if there's a set way to do something and God is telling you, this is what I want you to do, then you gotta be obedient. And mm -hmm. and, and you know, and that's that relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, can He trust you? Amen. Mm -hmm. The relationship with husband and wife, you know, uh, where, okay, praise God, <laughs> praise God, mm -hmm. you know, where that one can tell the wow. other, you know, the truth, you know, that they see about, about the other one, mm -hmm. you know, and about getting upset and not being able to take it and all of that. Mm -hmm. I've experienced some of that, mm -hmm. you know, and. It, it does, it makes you stronger, you know, because you have, you have to allow the spirit of God, you know, to show you who you are, mm -hmm. to show you your faults mm -hmm. and everything. And, and in a marriage, you have to know and you have to have that trust, you know, that my spouse is not out to hurt me. Right. Or, Vice versa, I'm not out to hurt him. Yes, and I can tell him things, you know, and and he and he he will listen to me, mm -hmm. you know, and I will definitely listen to him, you know. But um, I'm saying all of that to say that, you know, that's the greatest relationship that a person can have, 
is with their spouse. Mm-hmm. You know, because they know you inside and out. Mm-hmm. They know things about you that you're not willing to admit right. that's bad. Right. And if God is in them, they will tell you. Right. You know, and you have to like I said, search yourself and let mm-hmm. the Lord show you yourself so that you can accept it. And if you find yourself getting anger, mm-hmm. you know, which Lord knows we're human, we get angry. Right. You know, and go away for a few minutes and come back and say, you know what? I apologize. <laughs> Amen. I am so sorry. That's right. You know, because God has shown me yes. who I am. Right. And another thing, you know, even when on the spiritual side, mm-hmm. you know, there are times, actually it happened today, you know, <laughs> <laughs> praise God, it happened today. Um, yesterday, he had he had gone out, and he came back, and it was such a beautiful smile on his face, and I said, oh, I like that smile, I like that, <laughs> you know, and then he gave me that testimony about this this little girl that he saw in the store Mm -hmm. and how beautiful she was and and how she was just talking and and just living life and I said oh my goodness that's abundant that's abundant life Mm -hmm. and it stayed on my mind all night Mm -hmm. so early early this morning when I got up the Lord began to talk to me about abundant life Mm. you know and I went in the scriptures and everything and then when I came out of the out of my room and he was already in the in the living room and he was sitting there and I had to tell him. Right. I had to tell him. And he had been in the very same scriptures. Wow. You know, Praise and, God. That, and that's to me that's unity. Yes. Mm-hmm. You Amen. know, and, and that's the spirit of God. Mm-hmm. You know, and that makes you closer. Yes, it does. You know, when you can share like that. Amen. And that's a real relationship. Right. You know, because but it's all orchestrated by the Father. Absolutely. We want to thank you all for joining tonight. Uh, thank you again, Kenya, for being here. I think this, this is great Bible study. Of course, it's great we went over, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> but we want to take this opportunity to just um, in give the invitation for those who would like to make a quality decision for the Lord tonight. If you're viewing and you feel like you're friendless, you feel alone, there is a God that declares that he is a friend that sticks closer than any friend. (laughs) And uh, he avails himself to you tonight uh, so you can have the uh, gift of salvation. You also can, if you've uh, held his hand and you walk with him and you find yourself, you feel like you're walking alone, as I said, you can rededicate your life. And he'll open his, his arms are already open to welcome you back in. And we also want to, if you uh, do not have a, a ministry that you are part of uh, where that can help you to continue to stay built up and walk in your most holy faith, then we invite you to join us here at the Bridge Church of Alabama. If you'd like to make any of those decisions, I ask you to say this prayer with me. Those of you who are in the building, if you would, um, just re- recite and repeat it after me as well. Father God, Father God you know my life. You know and you know how I've lived it. I ask you, Father, to come into my heart and forgive me of my sins. I believe in your son, Jesus. He died on the cross for me. He was buried in a tomb, but on the third day, he rose from the dead with all power in his hands. It is that same power that saves me. Thank you, Father, for saving me and giving me a new life through and in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'll call you all. Give a hand clap of praise. Made the decision. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for the great feedback tonight. Uh, just want to uh, pray that you have a blessed rest of the week. Amen. And thank you all for just joining us tonight. And we want to say good night to all of those 
uh, from the Bridge Church of Alabama, where we're loving God, loving people, and pursuing purpose. You know what's up? We're out. God bless you.